Welcome to ECLEMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed heat transfer by radiation, and then we said heat transfer by radiation does not require a material medium, that is, it does not require solids, liquids, and gases for it to be transmitted from one point to another. We further looked at the properties or the characteristics of thermal radiation. We realized that thermal radiation, just like light, it can be refracted or focused to one point using a hand lens. And then further we moved down and discussed the emission and absorbers in terms of materials. And we said good absorbers of radiant heat are also good radiators of radiant heat. We said poor absorbers of radiant heat are also poor emitters of radiant heat. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss the application of thermal radiation, and we are going to see how good absorbers are applied in our daily lives and how poor absorbers and poor emitters are also applied in our everyday life. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how a solar heater utilizes the idea of radiant heat, especially in absorption and emission of radiant heat, to heat up some substances like water. Then we are going to discuss how a solar concentrator is used, especially the idea of that radiant heat can be refracted. So we are going to see how we can refract or converge radiant heat from the sun, and then that heat we utilize it in warming up or heating substances at the point of focus. So we are going to start with the solar heater, but before we proceed further, it's important that you note the path of a solar heater and on the first diagram we have the main parts of a solar heater and then on the second diagram we have the cross-section part of a solar heater so the main components of a solar heater it contains a coiled copper wire it contains a coiled copper wire the coiled copper wire is the one that you can see here as i'm tracing this is a coiled copper wire as you can see it's coiled several times the reason why it's coiled several times is to increase the surface area which will be in contact with the radiant heat from the sun. So it's called it several times so that we increase the surface area of absorption of heat from the sun. Then it's painted black. It's painted black because black, we said, black substances are good absorbers of radiant heat. So we paint it black so that it can absorb maximum heat from the sun. Then the other part is a glass window. Glass window, we are going to see it, what the function of that glass window later. And then we have copper. The reason why it's, uh, we use copper is because, remember, when we were testing thermal conductivity of materials, we said copper is the best conductor of heat, followed by aluminium, then iron, then lead, and then wood is a poor conductor. So yeah, we are going to use the best conductor of heat, that is copper. Then we have the water inlet. Water inlet, that is where we put cold water inside this pipe. Then the water will be moving through that, those coils under the heating of that rays from the sun. Then when it gets out on the other end, it will be warm water. And then the last component of the, or the main component of this solar heater is the storage tank, which will be storing the water that has been warmed up or that has been heated by the sun. Then, the second diagram here you can see is the cross-section part of a solar heater. And on the cross-section part of a solar heater, we have a blackened copper collector. We are going to see that, but it's important to know that it's blackened. Remember, black is a good absorber of heat, and it's copper. Copper is the best conductor of heat. So we have a blackened uh, uh, copper collector. We are going to see its function and why it is black. Then we have an insulator, good insulator, where the pipes are laying on. Those good insulator, we are going to see its function. Then we have airspace. 
we have air space here between the glass window and the pipes. We are going to see the function of that later. Then we have blackened copper pipes. Of course, we have discussed this one. They are black so that they can absorb maximum heat and they are made of copper because copper is the best conductor of heat. Then we have another component here, which is a glass cover. We are going to see the function of the glass cover shortly. And then now the radiant heat from the sun will heat through the uh, glass cover into the airspace and then into the blackened copper collector and the copper pipes. So the cross-section part of this solar heater is that we have said we have the blackened copper collector. The blackened copper collector, its function will be uh, collecting the rays of light or the heat from the sun, which will be heating through the glass window into this uh, system. So this collector will collect heat where there's no copper pipes. Like in this place here, there's no copper pipes. So this uh, copper collector will be the one which will collect heat and then conduct it into the copper pipes. Remember, black is a good absorber of heat and then copper is the best conductor of heat. So if you have a blackened copper collector, it will receive the heat and then conduct it into the pipes containing a water. Then the second component we have is a good insulator. The good insulator here is very large and the copper pipes and the copper collectors are lying on top of it. The reason why we use this good insulator is to make sure that the heat which is received by these pipes is not conducted away. So we make sure that we use an insulator so that the heat is not conducted away since insulators don't conduct heat. So all the heat will be maintained. All the heat will be maintained within the copper collector and the copper wires. Then we have a glass window. The glass window is transparent. This glass window is very transparent and it will allow, it will allow the radiant heat to pass from the sun into the copper wires or into the copper pipes and into the blackened copper collector. However, we are going to realize that this uh, glass window is also shiny in such a way that the, it allows only heat from the sun which has large amount of energy to come in. And now when these pipes or this blackened uh, copper collector, remember they are also good emitters, when they are going to emit some heat, that heat will be of low energy. So this glass is going to ensure that the low energy which is emitted by the pipes inside is not transmitted out. So it's going to maintain the heat within this system. If this pipe emits some heat, the heat will be reflected back. If they try to emit to the uh, outside, then they um, uh, reflect it back into the system. And through that, the water will maintain, or the heat will be maintained within the system. Then the other part that we have is the airspace. We have the airspace between the copper wires and the collectors and the glass window. Now air, remember, we say there's a very poor conductor of heat. This air is a very poor conductor of heat. So this space will ensure that radiant heat from the sun, since radiant heat does not depend on any medium, so it will penetrate through the air. But once it has heated here, we use this air so that heat cannot be conducted outside. So this air will act as a poor conductor of heat from inside these pipes to the outside part. So all the heat will be maintained within the uh, solar heater because of this air space, which will minimize conduction and also due to this good insulator, which will also minimize heat loss from these pipes into the environment. And also this glass window will make sure that the heat from the sun of high energy will enter into the system, but the low energy heat which will be emitted by the pipes will not move out. It will ensure that that heat of low energy will be reflected within the system. So that is how a solar heater works. So the second application of radiation as a mode of heat transfer is in use of solar concentrators. Remember, in the first application, we used flat plate copper collectors and the idea of that radiant heat can be absorbed or emitted to collect heat and then conduct it into the copper pipes, the copper pipe will heat the
the water and then you will collect warm water. But here we are going to use the idea of uh, curved mirrors which can converge radiant heat into one point. Remember when we were discussing the nature of radiant heat, we said radiant heat can be refracted or can be changed direction to one point, which we call the point of focus. So in this case, we are going to use concave mirrors or parabolic mirrors. We are going to discuss more on this in the fifth topic of form two, that is reflection on curved mirrors or surfaces. And in this case, if you use a concave mirror or a parabolic mirror, they have a point which we call the focal point. The focal point is where all rays which comes from a distance meet before they can diverge to other places. So if you put a pan, if you put a pan which is painted black at the point which we call the focal point, focal point, and then put this mirror in a position that it receives rays from infinity or from the sun, those rays, when they meet this mirror, all of them will meet at this focal point. And if you put, let's say, a substance or food you want to cook, you put it at that point, the heat which will be received at the focal point will be very high, or it will receive a very large amount of heat, which can cook anything that you have. Even if you want to cook maize, it will be roasted at that point, because the heat which will be received is very high. Remember, when we used the hand lens, the papers were able to be burned. So now if you use a concave mirror or a parabolic mirror, it will converge a lot of heat at that point, and this heat now is very resourceful and it's applied in what we call solar concentrators. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the general application of heat transfer in terms of conduction, convection, and radiation at once in an instrument we call a vacuum or a thermos flask.